Well, happy Thursday of Holy Week, everyone, uh, which is also known as Maundy Thursday, which comes from the Latin term uh, for command. Uh, this is the day that Jesus celebrates the final Passover, the Last Supper with his disciples, and commands them regarding what they should be doing in the coming days, uh, also telling them that all of them will betray him. Uh, the Gospel of Mark that we've been kind of going through and using kind of as our guide, uh, it gives us about uh, it gives us about 50, 60 verses uh, on what happened on that day. Uh, but if you want a, a more kind of exhaustive uh, approach to what is going on, the Gospel of John actually records in several chapters almost all of what Jesus said, including uh, the the prayers that he prayed in the garden on our behalf and on his behalf as well. Um, as we approach this day, I, I pray that uh, you've really been reflecting on what Jesus is going through, because on this Thursday, we see all of the things that have been kind of building up uh, along the, the way, him coming triumphantly into Jerusalem, him cleansing the temple and being tested uh, by the religious leaders, and, and finally the plot to kill him, kind of coming into into play with Judas, uh, one of his disciples, deciding that he would betray Jesus. We're going to see that plot on this Thursday kind of come full circle and for him to finally be betrayed. I'm only going to read just a few verses for us uh, today. We, we see uh, in Mark chapter 14, most of Mark 14 is actually talking about what happened on this Thursday, beginning in verse 12, the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb. This is that Thursday uh, that we're talking about here. He um, looks, the disciples come to him, ask him, what should we do? How are we going to celebrate the Passover? Of course, they're trying to be uh, keep the Jewish law as well. And so he tells them about what, what's going to happen, tells them uh, where they should go and how they should make preparations. And then he looks at them as, as they're reclining there at the table, tells them that one of, one of them is going to betray him. And, uh, and then, of course, he takes the elements there redefine some of the elements. So there are several elements of the Passover table, the setter, that, that, so to speak. Um, unleavened bread was part of that. They would eat unleavened bread in remembrance of the fact that they had to eat unleavened bread as, as they were leaving uh, Egypt. Uh, this was the celebration of Passover that we're talking about here. And so they had to, they didn't even have time for their bread to rise. So they had to eat unleavened bread as they were leaving. Uh, they also ate a, a variety of these bitter herbs. Uh, these herbs uh, kind of symbolized the bitterness of slavery that they had undergone as the, the Jewish people were enslaved there in Egypt. And later on, after uh, after many years, they also added the, the addition of wine that they would take. And this was a cup of joy, joyous wine that they, they could drink uh, in joy of knowing that they were free, that they had uh, escaped that, uh, that uh, night, at, that first night of Passover. And so he takes the elements, the, the element of the bread, the element of the cup, and he redefines them in a way that shows that he really is the Passover lamb, that he is the one who is fulfilling all of these things. So he takes the bread and he breaks it and he says, this is my body. And he takes the cup and he drinks it and he says, this is my blood that's poured out, poured out on behalf of the people. Now you notice he didn't do anything with the bitter herbs. And many people believe that this is because he was going to take the bitterness of, of dying on the cross, the bitterness of slavery, uh, and, and take those and eat those himself, honestly. So what was left over for us was only the sweet parts, the sweet, joyous cup of his blood and the bread as well. So we see after this, they, they left from this meal where he has redefined these things, and he they go out singing a uh, sing, sing a hymn, and they go out singing, and, and then they um, go to the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus there prays and suffers much anguish on behalf of, uh, of, of all mankind, where he's, he's coming to this place of looking into, uh, um, as we may say, he looked into the cup of God's wrath, and he realized what he was about to go through, the human suffering he was about to go through, the God-forsakenness he was about to go through. 
And we have maybe uh, probably some of the, the craziest words, maybe some of the, the, the craziest part here is in starting in verse 32 of chapter 14. And I'm going to read this part of us of this for us. And I think we have a lesson to take away from this. It says, And they went to, to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to great, be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little further, he fell on the ground, and he prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And these are the words of Jesus in praying, looking into that cup, looking into what he was about to go through, and what he prayed to, to Jesus. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And of course, he goes and he, he finds Peter and Simon, uh, Peter sleeping, and, and then he does this three, two more times, a total of three times he does this, and he goes and prays this prayer. So I believe on this, this night, we, we see Jesus in his humanity and his weakness of flesh, seeing this thing that should cause in all of us despair, what he was about to go through was going to be the hardest thing anyone has ever experienced, a God-forsakenness. And he looked into it and realized the, that what obedience to God's will meant. Obedience meant him drinking the full wrath of God, him taking on all of the sins of all mankind. And he looked on that and he said, God, I know you can. all things are possible with you. Let this cup pass from me. And so we, just as Jesus, many times may look at what it means to obey God, what it means to be obedient to God's will. We may look at it and say, I, I, that just is way too hard. But we take here the example of Jesus. And yes, while we pray these words, absolutely, God, this seems too hard. We are honest with God and saying, God, just let this thing pass from me. We don't stop there, though. You see, that can be a very selfish prayer. God, this is too hard. Let this thing come from me. We continue the prayer just as Jesus did, saying, yeah, this is hard, but ultimately not what I want, what you want. So I want to encourage you today, this Monday, Thursday, as we look at Jesus and his anguish, how he responded to God and obedience to God by saying, God, this is hard. God, if there's any other way, let it happen. But ultimately, not your will, not my will, but your will. And that's what we must pray too. We must pray ultimately being obedient to God. God, yeah, it's, it's hard. We can say that. We can bring those things to God. But ultimately, we must pray, not my will, but your will be done.